Welcome to Electro Online. Now we're going to take a look at the same problem we did before, but this time there's friction between the blocks and the floor. So that makes things a little bit more complicated. And what we're going to do here is again first find the acceleration of the whole system, and then we're going to find the net force on the middle block M2. So how does that work now that there's friction involved? Well first let's find the acceleration, and so we're going to take this as a whole system. This means we're going to find F net is equal to the total mass of the system times the acceleration, or the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the total mass. Now the net force is going to be the force that aids acceleration. We assume that the acceleration is going to be in this direction. So this is the aiding force that will be 120 newtons minus the friction force. Now the friction force is going to be pushing in the opposite direction force friction, and that's going to be equal to the normal force times mu. In this case, it's going to be mu sub k because the whole system is going to be moving. Now, the normal force here is the force pushing back. So what we have, we have m1g, we have m2g, and we have m3g. Maybe I should make this a little longer. And so then we have the normal force, that would be n1, we have a normal force here, which is N2, and a normal force here, which is N3. And of course, the normal force that causes friction in the whole system will be the sum of those three normal forces. So in this case, we can say that the friction force is going to be equal to the sum of all the normal forces, all times the coefficient of friction. And of course, that will be the weight of all three blocks combined. And so in this case, that would be equal to the sum of the three masses, that would be 6 kilograms times acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, all times 0 0.5, because that's the coefficient of kinetic friction in this problem. So let's see here, let's get a calculator out. And that would be 6 times 9.8 times 0 0.5, that gives us 29.4. So that's the total friction force that's pushing in the opposite direction, and that should be newtons, divided by the total mass, which is 2, 3, that's 6 kilograms. Let me correct this here. So that's newtons. And so this becomes equal to 90.6 newtons, because 90 plus 29.4 is 120, and divided by 6 kilograms, and that is equal to 15 Looks like uh, 15, let's see, 90.6 divided by 6 equals 15.1, yes. 15.1 meters per second squared. That's a lousy looking 5. There we go. Okay, now that we found the acceleration of the whole system, how do we find the net force on block 1? So let's go ahead and try to think about that. We're going to draw a free body diagram for block 1. So here's M1. It's uh, 1 kilogram. And so I would say the net force acting on this, that would be the force pushing on the left minus the force pushing on the right. So what is the force pushing on the right again like we did before? Since the 1 kilogram block pushes against the 3 kilogram block, kilogram block trying to make it accelerate, there's going to be a reactionary force due to Newton's third law pushing back on the one kilogram block. And then the force pushing to the right on the one kilogram block here, that's going to be the force to accelerate the rest of the system, the one kilogram block, the three kilo kilogram block coming after it. So the force on this side is going to push everything over to this side. So let's Think of this as being the force on the left, the force on the left, and then here is going to be the force on the right. And now we have to figure out what those forces are. And so the force on the left is going to be equal to the force required to accelerate the two blocks, the one kilogram block and the three kilogram block, plus it needs to be the force to overcome the friction caused by the, the, the uh, coefficient of friction between the two blocks and the floor. So the force on the left is going to be equal to MA, and let's see here, that would be um, 
uh, m2 plus m3 times acceleration plus the force of friction, so the force friction on blocks 2 and 3. So in this case, that's going to be equal to the sum of the two masses, which is the 4 kilograms, times the acceleration that we found, 15.1 meters per second squared. So that's the force required to accelerate the two blocks, plus the friction force on 2 and 3. Now that would be equal to the weight of 2, that would be m g, that would be m2g plus the weight on the third one, m3g times mu sub k. So that would be equal to 60.4 newtons plus, so m2, that's a 1 kilogram times 9.8 meters per second squared plus 3 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared and the whole thing multiplied times 0 0.5, which is a coefficient of kinetic friction. So let's see what that is equal to. So this is equal to 60.4 newtons plus 19.6 newtons, which is equal to 80 newtons. So that is the force pushing from the left. So this here equals 80 newtons. So now we need to know the force pushing from the right which is the same as the force pushing the 3 kilogram block, the force from the 1 kilogram block pushing on the 3 kilogram block is the same as from the 3 kilogram block pushing back against the 1 kilogram block because of Newton's uh, second or uh, third law. So to find this here, where do we do that? Okay, force on the right. Force on the right, which is equal to the force required to accelerate the 3 kilogram block, which is M3A, plus the force required to overcome the friction force between M3 and the floor, so that would be M3G times mu sub K. So in this case, uh, M3, that would be 3 kilograms, times the 15.1 meters per second squared, plus M3, that would be 3 kilograms, times the 9.8 meters per second squared, times 0 0.5. Now this is equal to 45.3 newtons plus, and what is that equal to? So we have 3 times 9.8 times 0.5 is 14.7 newtons. 14.7 newtons, which is equal to 60 newtons. And let me put a line here so we don't get things confused. And so notice that the force on the right is equal to 60 newtons. And let's go like that. Okay, now we have a force of 80 newtons pushing to the right, a force of 60 newtons pushing to the uh, from the right, I mean to the right and then from the right. So you can see that the net force acting on M1 F net on M1 is equal to the 80 newtons pushing to the right minus the 60 newtons pushing to the left, which is equal to 20 newtons, which of course, as we would expect, notice if we have 120 newtons pushing against 6 kilograms, then every 1 kilogram can expect a push of 20 newtons, and so therefore you can see that this is a 20 newton force. Now that's not necessarily the net force yet on M1 because what we also have is we have the friction force on, between M1 and the floor. So there's an additional friction force here, force friction, which is equal to M1g times mu sub s. And if we calculate that one here, so we have M1g mu sub s is equal to 1 times 9.8 times 0 0.5, which is equal to 4.9 newtons. So the net force actually acting on M1 is going to be the 20 newtons, that's the difference between the force pushing to the right minus the force pushing to the left, but we also have the friction force acting on M1. So what we have to do is subtract from that the force required to overcome friction, which is 4.9 newtons. And so essentially, 
the total net force on M1 is going to be equal to 20 newtons minus 4.9, which is 15.1 newtons. So, if we only take the difference between the forces pushing in both directions, we have 80 newtons minus 60 newtons, which is one sixth of 120 newtons. But we also have to take into account that we have to overcome the friction between M1 and the floor, which is a force of 4.9 newtons. Subtract that from this and we get a force of 15.1 newtons, which is the net force, including the force from friction, on M1. And that's how it's done.